Well, hey guys, Backwires and Backroads here. So today I am going to attempt to put the Honda 50 horse four stroke that I got last winter down in Kentucky, if you remember. It's a couple of episodes back on the Beagle Barge Beagle build. Um, I am going to try to put it on this transom of the Beagle Barge today. And I'm going to show you the solution that I came up with. Hopefully it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Um, the challenge of this one is the Beagle Barge has what's called a fan tail. Obviously it's a, it's a cover that goes around, kind of a protective deck, you know, that goes around the, uh, the outboard. So I can't just use like a cherry picker or an engine hoist to just kind of wheel it in and place it on. I have to come either from the bottom or the top, as you can see. You know, I can't come straight on here, so I have to... So my solution is, I'm going to show you in this video, so please stay tuned. Now here is the thing that I bought. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to get these this outboard on the back of the boat. Or maybe more outboards on the back of other boats in the future. Um, it's a chain hoist. It's a one ton. I probably could have gotten by with a half ton. You know, probably pretty easy. But this was the only one they had in stock at Harbor Freight. Um, I think it cost me about 70 bucks or something. Or Yeah, 70 bucks. I don't know. I have to look at the receipts. But... Uh, yeah, let's open this up. I'll show you, you know, give you guys some ideas if you ever come across this in the future. So I've never had one of these before. I'm going to have to teach myself how to use it. Ugh, man, it's heavy. I'm going to have to use both hands. Okay, so I got it out of the box here, guys. Um, came with some instructions, luckily. It's got really fine grease oil all over it, which I guess was a good thing. Um, yeah, I'll take a peruse through the instructions, see if I can teach myself how to use this, and uh, we'll continue on. Let's get this job done. So we're a little further along here, guys. I'll show you what I did. Was I took a fence post that I have back in my pile, and I lashed it to the railing with the pieces of many thousands of feet of rope <laughs> that I've accumulated over the past 10 years or so with buying and selling boats. I have enough rope to probably, uh, well, climb Mount Everest if I wasn't afraid of heights <laughs> and have some to spare. Bring a buddy with me. So, but anyways, yeah, we'll, we'll continue on here. You probably see, you know, roughly what I'm going at here. So we'll see if this works. Okay guys, so let's show you what I came up with. Put a rope around the center above the outboard bay and I put that block and tackle on and it's pretty straightforward how it works, I'm sure. More than half the people watching this video already know this, but you know, I gotta, I learn as I go. We got the hook down there, which is gonna grab the hook on top of the outboard. Now this particular outboard weighs about 250, not even that, 220 pounds. Plus I have the lower unit taken off right now. I figured I'd, I'd so I did a water pump kit on it. And, and here, I'll just show you. Come over here to my messy garage. Here's the outboard that's going on it. And I left the, the, the lower unit off because I did a water pump kit and I figured that'll, you know, spare 20 pounds or whatever, you know, putting it on. Even if I have to just grab it like a bear and, you know, break my back and put it on, which I think I'm old enough and wise enough not to be that stupid anymore. Um, so yeah, there's a hook right here on the top of most outboards, you know, past a certain horsepower. And that's where this block and tackle is going to grab it. So hopefully, we'll see how it goes. We're just doing this on the fly and uh, hopefully we'll have a success today. Okay, guys, you can see that I dragged the outboard out, and I positioned it underneath the outboard bay. 
Now, I'll remind you again that the reason why I'm having to do this like this is because I can't use a cherry picker or something that would just come straight in. Like, you know, like when I took it off the pontoon boat, it came off of it was a lot easier, a lot more straightforward. But because, you know, I've thought about, um, you know, cutting a section, you know, maybe making it like a removable. But I really like the surround deck. And that would be a last resort. I really don't want to cut into this boat unless I absolutely have to. So let's see if this works. I think it's going to. Okay, guys. So hopefully I'm not giving you too much detail here, but let me kind of show you how this works. It's on a gear rejection system, like really... Oh, I think I'm pulling the wrong one here. you got to pull the right Is this one. There we go. Makes a different sound, so... So just, it, this is, you know, it uses like gear ratios to allow you to lift more weight. So you can see I'm just pulling on this the right direction. And it's feeding in slowly into the lock and tackle. And it's very slowly lifting the weight. Now I'm going to use both hands here, so hold on. Okay guys, so I had to kick it up a little higher because I was running out of room to lift. So I put it on another couple of blocks here you can see. Hopefully those, this will give me just enough. Alright guys, well it looks like this is going to work. I had just enough room to get it up in the well there and now it's sitting on the hooks on the bracket of the motor. And I'm going to see if I can line up the bolts now and get this thing on. Oh, are you helping now that all the hard work's done? Whoa. That looks like it's going to clear. Cool. All right, guys, so I got the lower unit on. I might still have to do some adjusting to the shift linkage. You can see here, you gotta get this, you gotta get this pretty right to make it shift properly, but it's, you know, it's at least adjustable, so. I'm gonna leave it alone for now, because I can manually put it in forward and neutral, like right now it's in neutral, and you, can, you can't hear it, so, you know, just some fine tuning later. If I forget that, and you see me uh, a couple episodes from now having trouble putting it in reverse or something, just remind me of this, please. All right, guys, so you can see this is roughly how it's going to look back here. It actually fits great. I think that whoever designed this boat probably had a 50 or some size in that range in mind um, because, let me show you. The, uh, here it is turned completely, one direction, clears, turn it the other direction, as far as it'll go, cleared, and let's, uh, let's tilt it up and see what happens. I've actually not tilted it all the way up yet, so we'll find out together. Okay, so I can't quite uh, tilt it all the way up because it looks like it's hitting the lower unit right there 
but I mean that's pretty darn close. I don't think I could go up much farther, maybe another inch or two. So hopefully that'll get the lower unit out of the water or close. I mean the shanty beagle, for example, I couldn't get the uh, the entire lower unit out of the water. So not all boats you can. Some you can, some you can't. Depends on the design and you know the lift and such. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I can do a little modifications, you know, down the road. Do a little bit of shaving or maybe like an indentation, you know, on this somewhere. But we'll see. But even if it ends up just being that, I'm okay with it. It took me about, I don't know, four or five hours to figure out how to mount this 50 horse on the back of the Beagle Barge. But um, my plan worked. The, the block and tackle... Uh, system on the on the beam over uh, over the the railing there worked great um, I'd do it again I'd recommend it if you don't have a better way to do it you know so uh, I think the next step will be to see if this engine runs good um, if it does then I'm I need to get some longer cables to make it up to the to the steering council because the boat that this motor came off of was a lot shorter than the Beagle Barge here. But uh, I think the harness I have now is long enough, so that's that's a gift. <clears throat> I don't have to get a harness extension. So uh, yeah, the next step will be, let's see what the, how this motor runs. Um, so please stay tuned. Okay, so it's a beautiful day. Man, this has been a fantastic summer so far, and it's only like the beginning of June. Oh, I love it. So, I got some sea foam. I got some high octane gasoline. I'm gonna hook up uh, the harness to the, the outboard here, and we're gonna back it in the water and see if we can get it to start and see how it runs and see how it idles. So, stay tuned. So just for testing purposes today, I brought the harness in. Here's my box of controls. And I'm going to hook it up and use the key to start it. I can't think of any other way to do it, but it's pretty easy. All right, guys, I think this motor's gonna run. Well guys, it doesn't run great, but it runs pretty good. It does idle. I had to turn up the idle a little bit to stay running, but it will restart. It doesn't seem like it's overheating. I think the, um, the cooling tubes are maybe a little clogged up. I'm gonna try to clean those out a little bit, but I think this motor, given some time, letting it run, will actually clear itself out better and run pretty good. Okay guys, I'm also going to show you that uh, I can put it in gear here. And uh, rev it up. So it looks like lower units at least going into forward. I let it run for a little bit here, and it's starting to idle down good. Starts up easy. Man, this is gonna be a good running little motor. Happy. Let me show you what I mean, so turn it off here. Let's see, I got it turned off. <clears throat> now it is warmed up, so. Starts back up on idle. A lot of times these carbureted four strokes, when they sit a long time, they just need to be run for a while. That's what happened with the Shanty Beagle. It had that 60 horse Yamaha four stroke on the back. And uh, it didn't run the best when I got it. It ran okay. 
but after I, you know, halfway through the trip, it was purring like a kitten, so I think the same's gonna happen to this one.